happy Thursday. Today we are going to start our message titled Decalcifying the Third Eye. And um, I'm Divine Wisdom. This is Agape Love Church of Jesus Christ. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. And um, like and share the message if you're on Facebook or Instagram. Today we are going to be reading out of Luke, Matthew, and Revelation 21. And we're talking about overcoming the darkness, right? And how through our spiritual awakening, overcoming the darkness, and not just for ourselves, but understanding when someone else is going through a spiritual awakening and the process that they're going through and the importance of decalcifying the third eye. So in our last message, we talked about what we're going to... Um, what the third eye is and um, that, we, that we were going to talk about what the third eye is and what decalcification is and how we are to apply it to our spiritual lives um, because there's one um, part of decalcification that requires the physical body but there are a lot of things about science and physics that if we take if we apply it to our understanding of biblical scripture and the process of spirituality, we will come into a deeper understanding, a concrete understanding of how things, all things work together for our good. Okay, so before I start, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, let this word go out and be edifying to your children as well as edifying to myself. Speak through me. Let it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Okay. So, decalcification, right? Decalcification is when the calcium um, deposits, right? When, the, when we're talking about how calcium buildup in the body can cause problems, right? And if calcium buildup happens in the third eye, it can cause problems too. And relatably, we're looking at how those calcium buildups happen, right? And the calcium buildups in the body happen through things that initiated by trauma right like sickness um past surgeries aging these are the things that um cause calcium to build up right but it's one you need calcium right but you don't want it to build up in your third eye because it causes you not to be able to see light right and we need people who are going through their spiritual awakening to come into the fullness of god light to see light to overcome darkness so overcoming, so understand that when you're going through a spiritual awakening, there is an introduction of darkness to you, right? Because God is light and there's no darkness in him. So to actually get to God, you have to overcome the darkness. And this is the importance of Christ. And this is why Christ said, no one can come to the Father but through me. Because there is a relinquishing of all the things that cause trauma, right? The healing, right? This is the healing that we experience in Jesus Christ because we let go of those things we see differently, right? So overcoming the revelation of darkness requires strengthening. That comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Ushering in or inviting in the Holy Spirit is a task of intentionality. In what is put in the body, the vessel, the mind, and your own human experience, because as it relates to calcification, biologically speaking, healthy lifestyle habits rids the body of calcium deposits. And what actually blocks calcium absorption is fibers such as wheat bran. We can look at this as the bread of life and foods that include oxalic acid, spinach, and rubber. Right? These things bind with calcium and prevent and prevent it from being absorbed um, in the body, right? We can see the green leafy vegetables as the leaves for the healing of the nations, as well as the creation of oxygen. The, the, this is where the creation of oxygen happens through the process of photosynthesis. And we talked about photosynthesis in our um, messages titled Algorithm and Chloroplast, right? So involving the sun and the earth, our spiritual identity coming together with our physical existence harmoniously this is an individual journey of overcoming the um that decalcifies the third eye right so um the intellectual and spiritual is actually easier 
and more accessible than the physical because we are naturally attuned to higher frequency of our soul perception than our physical existence right so it's actually easier easier for us to start receiving messages and understandings beyond the physical before our physical body is actually ready to receive it right or un before we are actually able to receive it in the physical so there's this physical um application of biblical scripture and the way of life that is given to us through the teachings of Jesus Christ that will bring us into a readiness to be able to receive and not only receive but process the intellectual and spiritual downloads that we receive it through our spiritual awakening so um, and though we are not this is why in our subconscious state we receive dreams and vision you know like things it's easier for us to receive information spiritually and intellectually versus physically because physically we are attached to something that is not conducive <laughs> to um the fullness of our growth right the the totality of our existence and though we are not of the world, we are still in the world. And the tactics of this world is what we have to fight against and overcome in order to uplift humanity and bring others into the new earth or just hold the door once we have entered. Right? So we're reading out of Revelation 21 and we're talking about the new earth. And that's why um, it's about bringing others into the new earth. Right? So what is the, what does the third eye do? It is the center of spirituality and enlightenment. The third eye denotes in intuition and the ability to see things beyond what you see on the surface. Focusing on this chakra assists in visualizing and understanding the world beyond desires and distractions. Okay, I got that from the internet. Now, there is this rabbit hole of discovery. This is not from the internet. <laughs> there is this um, rabbit hole of discovery one can venture down to find the di directly linked comparison that will show proof and give clarity that these things are connected or i can just give you guys the bible verses right because i understand when i was putting together this message i was receiving all of these examples right and i'm like okay because yes it all like we can continue i can continue to go down the rabbit hole of discovery to prove that these things are connected or i can just give it to you straight out of biblical scripture and this is the beauty of biblical scripture bringing us into a place of wholeness where we understand all things right this is the gift of the holy spirit so um so i can just give you guys the bible verses that was downloaded to me for the expression of this word from god a teaching moment for both you and i that i am tasked with the responsibility of putting together in a way where one can understand the brilliance of biblical scripture as the living word of God directing us to our explanation for all things revealed to us in our seeking, right? So one thing that we have to notice when we see people who are having like a, a mental health crisis or something like that, they are sometimes most likely more intellectually inclined than others, right? Than some people who are just aloof and just existing in the world. And understand that intellectual inclination has been given to them for a reason to for them to be able to express themselves but sometimes if their intellectual um, awareness is so connected to the physical that they can't receive understanding spiritually they won't be able to express themselves and they'll become overwhelmed in their physical existence right so this is the um, purpose of introducing to setting the captives free, right? To bringing in something that will open their hearts and their minds beyond the physical that will free them and give them comfort and peace while they are experiencing like, and also direction and instruction, like to just to be kind, to be loved and allow the universe to work on your behalf. And in that instruction, it alleviates a lot of the trauma and the buildup of um, traumatic experience that has gotten to them, them to a place of anger and frustration. So, um, and then as a teaching moment, right, understand that that intellectualism and that hyper spirituality that if it's transmuted with the presence of the Holy Spirit and a relationship with God, it can be um, used to teach others, to bring others into the kingdom of God, right? To, to um, serve humanity. 
So prophetically, we are ailed with calcif with the calcified third eyes in our earthly realm of existence. And those who are being enlightened aren't able to receive or process their messages properly because there is a buildup or blockage that interferes with the flow of messages from the universe. If we look at what causes calcium salt buildup in the body, we can see that those things can also attribute to one personal trauma if experienced sickness illness infection if we look at these things in regards to spiritual damage done to us in this life experience we can also attribute an understanding that if these things occur over time it can cause us not to be as sensitive spiritually in our observation of the world around us right because if we are not spiritually sensitive right and what desensitizes our spiritual sensitivity is usually like our our aura our um you know what's going on inside of us is reflected on the outside of there are so many things in place that is governed by spiritual law right so if we understand spiritual law we understand that the mind and the spirit has to be a place of a homeostasis environment to be able to receive and process the experiences that we have in this physical life um to transmute them spiritually right for them to come to a place of um actually giving fruits Right or bearing fruits. Um, and that ca have caused us harm or could possibly cause us harm. And those things are moved when we elevate in consciousness and move accordingly. So if we look at the process of... Um, okay, well, this is why I kind of keep reading before I stop. If we are unable to filter our experiences properly, there will be a buildup of those experiences causing stagnation, hesitation, and a repetitive cycle of distraction being infiltrated into our immediate vicinity as this is the tactic of spiritual warfare. It's like a replay of trauma without understanding that the experience you had was to build you up, have you pay closer attention, make better decisions, Forgive more, stand on your own, respect others, your own life, and take more responsibility for your ascension. If this is an, if there is an inability to do this collectively, we can see that this form of warfare is being used against a specific population of people who find themselves stuck in an unfavorable existence for years, and those are the ones we need to, we who need to be free. Right, so we're going to read from Luke 14 really fast, 15 through 24. I'm just going to read through it. I'm not going to do too much at uh, lipping because it's basically going to speak to itself, especially with the rest of the message. Okay, so Luke 14, 15. And when one of them sat at meat with him, heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, begin to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And so that, so that servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go unto the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Right? So you guys can read this on your own because I believe if you read these verses on your own after listening to this message, you'll get even more of a deeper understanding of the call right and not only the call but those who are called and that it is easier for a man to enter a camel i mean you know enter through a camel's eye, a camel to enter through eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god right um and there's this this process of disconnect that has to happen right and and the hard 
the disconnect is hard to process and still stay afloat right because there is a focus on spiritual development that has to happen and that spiritual development has to happen with the disconnect from the physical and this is why the people who are hot and blind and the poor was easier it was it was no question they were ready to go to the feast right versus those who had all of these things connected to them okay so now we're going to read luke 4 18 through 19 and it reads there's so much in this bible y'all the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the lord right so understand that um the process of decalcifying the third eye is because the third eye is there it's active right but it's calcified those who are experienced and awakening it's a calcified there is a lot of trauma and a lot of misunderstanding involved with their spiritual awakening right so when we um it's about setting the captives free so okay so if the the bible says to set the captives free but first we need to know who is in captivity right so now we're going to go to matthew 6 22 through 23 the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light but if thine eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he would hold to one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon right so even in your servitude to humanity there is a bowing down to a certain power in place um whatever happenings and whatever's going on either you serve as a light in darkness or you serve darkness right so there is a responsibility to steward your light properly to be able to serve light at all times no matter what the situation you are in right so um i guess that's that now <laughs> i don't know y'all so what are we supposed to be seeing with our third eye opening what is our vision for and this is what weeds out the competition there may be opposition but with your third eye you will see that too you will see that too and not only the veil but beyond the veil to a place of true freedom right and when we talk about the veil um you know abraham and lot right lot um we're going to talk about this in the next message but lot the meaning of lot in hebrew is veil right and we are talking about so a veil covers the bride and if the bride is covered then and the veil is lifted that means nothing is obstructing the vision of the bride right and if something is obstructing the vision of the bride it's most likely it's um darkness right there's darkness and we have to go through the darkness some and then abraham had to take the darkness with him um, in his journey to the promised land or to the promise but there is a relinquishing of the veil at some point and then there's a coming into pure light and that is the process of decalcifying the third eye and that is the blessing of the Holy Spirit through the acceptance of Jesus Christ and the applications of his teaching right um, leave everything and follow me ye are my disciples or ye are my friends like these i will tell you things that um you know i don't tell nobody else right so these these are the um the relationship that we are seeking for others through the spreading of the gospel right through the inviting others into the kingdom 
through the um, offering of healing that is needed on every level to those who are afflicted because ultimately they need to come into the place of a kingdom mindset but they need things on the journey to get there and that is there is a direct path toward God's heart so now let's talk about the gates and how the revelation of the understanding regards to decalcifying the third eye applies to our knowledge of the gates because the, the title of this message is the gates part one decalcifying the third eye part one right so if we go to um revelations 21 we're going to read revelation 21 1 through 4 Well, if we go to Revelation 21, starting with Revelation 21 and 12, we can look at the representation of the gates as a place of judgment for the children of Israel. Um, a guarded way into something and for the purposes of keeping our vibration high, focusing on things above and not below, we will look to the hills which come our help and incline our divine information that keeps us that keeps us out of the lower realm of consciousness that rules the earth we live on but not the heavens above that hold our actual identity and the blueprint of our existence right so let's look at revelation 21 12 really fast and then we're going to go one through four and had a great wall and high and had 12 gates and the gates 12 angels and the names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of israel right so that is something that you guys can go back and study for the next few days in regards to the 12 tribes of israel um, but also look at the meanings of the names of the 12 tribes of israel and how it relates to the angelic presence in our lives as we um as we come into the new heaven and the new earth okay so um revelation 21 um one through four i have oh wait i have come to realize that the lower vibrational tendencies of our thinking and our existence is the actual illusion when the freedom of our hearts minds and spirits is our true reality this is why jesus says i am the truth the way and the life so 21 and 1 reads and i saw a heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea if we look at this new earth as a wave of consciousness and not a physical manifestation we can beat the illusion however the responsibility to dwell in this new earth requires us to consistently hold ourselves to a standard of a higher frequency forward thinking and righteous movement on behalf of our heavenly father and what we know to be right and true in his eyes according to his will for humanity when all has been revealed and overcome there is nothing left to see but the truth 21 and 2 reads and i john saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down from god out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned to her husband I, John, seeing the holy city is a testament of us living our lives a certain way until we see the truth, the wholeness of life and its busyness that the city represents, right? So I, John, right? So seeing, living our lives a certain way, right? We're looking at helping people, right? We're looking at helping them live their lives a certain way, right? Coming through the righteousness of God until we see the truth. Because as they live their life a certain way, they will come into the truth, right? What opposes them and what actually hinders them from coming into the truth is the life that they're experiencing, right? So bringing them out of that trauma, helping them heal, right? Um, through love and through the treatment that God feels that they de deserve, right? Um, not the way we feel that sometimes people are treated based on a system of checks and balances and upholding the righteousness of god requires you to um, advocate for a treatment that is pleasing to god for those um people who are in need and not a a treatment that satisfies the system of checks and balances 
So even the coming and the goings of men as a testament to the power of God working on behalf of humanity when we make ourselves as beacons of light for his love. It is a transformation within self and discards all things that are beneath the will and ways of God. And those things are the true illusions, right? So what's actually an illusion is the things that are beneath the will and the way of God. And when people are caught up in them and think they have control within them, they are trapped. And we choose to be a part of it or rise above it. In rising above, we must not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Therefore, our perception and the availability of our third eye to see beyond the illusion is necessary. If we are so caught up or held down by our own physical experiences, we won't be able to see the truth beyond the veil. This is why Abraham had to leave Lot when it was time for him to embrace his true blessing. Lot means veil, and Abraham took Lot the first time in the demise of Sodom and Gomorrah because he didn't know any better, and it was a testament of how God will process our own deliverance. And first, there is the veil, but when the veil is actually lifted, everything is all good compared to what we have been previously taught which is the veil being lifted exposes the truth of the bad when in actuality the illusion of the bad is the veil and the lifting of the veil is the honoring of the bride so 21 and 3 reads oh it's right here and i heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of god is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and god himself shall be with them and be their God. So, according to the Hebrew Bible, the tabernacle, also known as the tent of the congregation, was the portable earthly dwelling of God used by the Israelites from the Exodus until the conquest of Canaan, right? So, the tabernacle. The tabernacle of God is with the people. Right, so the word of God is with the people. Understand that, behold, right? There is this behold, and th this is out of Revelations. And we are coming to a place of prophecy being fulfilled, right? And Jesus, in his um, sacrifice on the cross, giving us access to the Holy Spirit through the word of God left to us to read, accept, adapt to, right? It is... Um, the tabernacle, the, the the movement of God's holy word, right, is the Holy Spirit. So, so as far as for the tabernacle, we are the host of the Spirit of God. This is why Jesus is referred to as the Lord of hosts. If we take time to understand the ways and the will of God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we find that the Spirit of God is one that brings healing, rejuvenation, revelation, and freedom. These things are pertinent to the establishment of the new earth. The whole purpose of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ was for the availability of the Holy Spirit. So this is the fulfilling of prophecy. When we are able to see things properly after we go through the process of shedding our lower selves for our true higher selves. So 21 and 4 reads, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away so the question is or one of the questions is how do we realistically get to this place is the question <laughs> we have to ask ourselves when we contemplate in the depths of this verse as it relates to the context of the other verses before and after this verse we can reference back to the words of Christ that I will send you a comforter that will teach you all things, right? So when we take the responsibility to have relationship with God through the inviting in and ushering in the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, then we come to a place of illumination in which our third eye is open, right? We go through the process of decalcifying our third eye through Jesus Christ, through the healing, the relinquishing, the understanding, right? The adaptation of the pure word of God to our lives. And as we adapt that word and we go through the process by keeping the word, right? So you keep the word, you go through the process, and this is like bringing the veil, right? This is like bringing Lot. Because as you are in Christ, it is not easy, right? It is not readily available. The understanding, the fullness of the truth is not readily available. It is being given to you through the process of believing in the Spirit of God, right? So... 
because John 14 so um, let's go to John 14 26 but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you this is why it's important that we just take time to read our Bibles and meditate on the words without trying to apply a level of comprehension to what we are reading, but instead allow the Holy Spirit to bring things together. We read in Psalms of Solomon last week about the process and not awakening love before he pleases, but to allow the process. This is the process we can also allow for others as we understand what is needed for true comfort. A former perspective shall pass away. We don't see with our two eyes, but we see with our mind, which is ultimately our third eye. So the decalcification is for our third eye to be more pure. Okay, love. That's it for today. Be blessed, be well, be whole, and we'll talk soon. God bless you.